at Excel Physics Core Practical 7. Investigate the effects of length, tension and mass per unit length on the frequency of a vibrating string. In front of you, you see one of the modes of vibration. This is the fundamental frequency and what you see on this string is a standing wave. Standing waves are formed when two progressive waves of the same frequency and the same amplitude meet and interfere. Here is a wonderful simulation from FET Colorado EDU. The oscillator is making a wave which is incident onto the G-clamp. The G-clamp reflects that wave and the reflected wave interferes with the oncoming wave producing a standing wave. Standing waves are really useful and in fact one of the most beautiful uses of standing waves is in musical instruments. Here you see a string quartet. What they're doing is oscillating strings on their stringed instruments and you're hearing mainly the fundamental frequency of the standing wave they're producing. Before they start playing they tune their instruments by turning the tuning pegs at the top of the instrument. This changes the tension on the string and affects the pitch of the note. Another way that they're changing the frequency of the notes is by changing the length of the string. So you can see their fingers moving. When they have a short string, you hear a high frequency. Long string, low frequency. So length affects the frequency you hear. So does tension. The final thing that these wonderful musicians do is they can play thicker strings or thinner strings. So thick strings have a high mass per unit length and they produce a lower pitch sound or a lower frequency. Thinner strings, the opposite. They have not as much mass per unit length and produce a higher pitch sound. So we'll stop the beautiful music and move on to some beautiful physics based on the standing waves formed on strings. The speed of a wave is related to its wavelength and its frequency. The speed of a wave on a string is also the square root of its tension divided by its mass per unit length. So if we equate these two equations and then square them, we get this relationship. This particular practical is looking at these variables and how they are related. So the whole point is you choose what to investigate. Will you change tension and measure frequency keeping wavelength and the mass per unit length the same? Will you measure mass per unit length? Change it by changing the type of string you're using and see how that affects the frequency at constant wavelength and constant tension. So using this equation as a basis, you have to pick two variables to investigate and keep the rest constant. Then after you take your measurements, you plot a graph to see if you can verify this particular relationship. Since we're not in the position where you guys can go and investigate this yourself and change the variables that you want, to get Core Practical 7 done, you must answer the following questions. They're all based on a student who decided to change the length of the string and then adjust the signal generator until they achieved the second harmonic. So they moved the wooden structure backwards and forwards and then turned the dial on the uh, signal generator to get this harmonic that you see in front of you now. Now this harmonic is very convenient because by taking a direct measurement of the length between the nodes here and the nodes here, you have the wavelength. Question A, how many wavelengths does the second harmonic correspond to?
B. What other variables must be kept the same to ensure a fair test? C. Write a plan of how the student, student should carry out the investigation. Make sure you state how you will measure length and frequency, as well as explaining what is kept constant. Use the results shown here to graphically display the relationship between length and frequency. So the best way to do this is to actually go back to the equation that we derived earlier. So frequency squared times wavelength squared equals tension divided by mass per unit length. So if I make frequency squared the subject of the formula, I can write this relationship like this. So if I plot frequency squared on the y-axis and 1 over lambda squared on the x-axis, I have a line with the relationship y equals mx. So I should find a straight line passing through the origin with gradient equal to tension divided by mass per unit length. After you have worked out your gradient, use that to find the mass per unit length of the string. As you can see here, the experimenter stated the tension that they used. So from the gradient, it's pretty straightforward to work out what mu is. Once you've done that, congratulations. You have completed Core Practical 7. Thank you for your attention and we can't wait to see you again back in the lab. Bye.